In this video, my overlanding trip becomes a rock hounding adventure. I head to the Chuckwalla Wilderness where I meet friends, proceed to the Hauser Geobeds, dig up geodes, take them to my buddy's shop and cut them open to reveal the beautiful gemstones Mother Nature has created. I set out on an overlanding trip and it turned into a rock hounding trip. I set out to do the Bradshaw Trail in Southern California from west to east and I spent about 60 miles of driving on the Bradshaw Trail to make it from where I started all the way to Wiley Wells Campground. And this morning, that's where I met my friends and they're gonna teach me a little bit about rock hounding. So Ed, Ed's working here in this hole. Let's see how he's doing. So I've been digging down, the, down here and uh, I found a few. This hole might be already dug. You know, it got some split open ones. This is uh, a nodule full of agate and stuff. And you can see the kind of warty texture on the back of it. And this one got a little bit different um, chalcedony, I do believe, inside of it. And got another one here, another nodule that's been split open. And of course, if you, if these were whole, you wouldn't see that. You just see the outside of them. You wouldn't see the inside. You have to cut them open or something like that. A little tiny one here. A little bit, not very clean. You can't really see it too well. That's another one. See if I get some water on it real quick. That's kind of what they look like on the inside. And they're kind of littered all over the place here. People have been working this for probably almost 100 years, probably. Wow. This is what we got so far in here. Yeah, the few I got in there. Uh, here's. Tell me about what you got to do to find out how actually good these are, Ed. Um, well, you don't you never know how good they are. Uh, the only way you find out is if you cut them in half and, uh, you know, with a saw. So you never know what you have until you start taking and uh, actually cutting them. So you take a whole bunch with you, hopefully whole ones, and you take and cut them in half and then you see which ones are good and throw the rest away that are no good. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I mean, you just never know. A lot of these do have stuff in them, so um, they're not too bad, but you know, other places you go, find geos, you know, you might, you know, throw 70% of them away and keep 30. Quartzsite, Arizona is not far from here, east on Highway 10, and apparently there's a million or a million and a half people there, and a lot of them are having a big gem convention, or rock collector convention, or rock hounding convention. We've seen quite a number of people out here today compared to what you'd normally see. This is the potato patch section of the Hauser geode beds. There's supposed to be a vein of geodes running parallel to this ridge. Although rock hounds have been digging here for years, there are still geodes to be found. We saw quite a few folks searching the area and got a visit from a local rock hounding legend. He dropped by to see how we were doing and if we had any good finds. Digging for geodes is hard work. We are here in the winter and it's still quite warm. Ed and Doug worked these holes for several hours till they had a good haul of geodes. We packed it in and headed to another location in the Hauser Geo Beds. It was several miles of four wheel drive roads to the next location, and it was a beautiful ride through the desert. So, I hope you guys liked the video. If you found it interesting or entertaining, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Help me grow this channel. We left the potato patch geo beds and drove quite a long ways through the desert. And without Ed leading the way, I would have never found this place and I won't be able to find my way back probably, other than my GPS helping me get back. Here we are at one of the Hauser geo beds. We're giving it a shot here and this seems to be paying off. All the driving, getting over here, 
Uh, they did pretty good over at the potato patch, but they're killing it here. They really found a very productive geo bed. The digging's good and they're finding a lot of good geos. We left the potato patch geo bed and headed over here to one of the Hauser geo beds. The Hauser geo bed fields are, is large and this is just one of the nondescript places that we managed to find. So what the guys are after are these geodes. And this is a good example of a small one. The idea is to find the biggest ones you can find and then when you split them open they'll have something that looks like this inside. Holy crap, man. Here's one right here that wasn't even yours. In this particular spot we found, they're all over because I just dropped that one and found this one, which with a little cleaning up and possibly some polishing could be a good, good piece. You'd only have one half of it though. Here's another one. This is what you'll see inside. But they can look like this and they can get pretty large. They can get up to the size of a basketball and you cut them open, people polish them and I'm not quite sure yet what people do with them. I guess they sell them a little bit, but there's a lot of people out here trying to find these. Got an opportunity to get out and hike around and see how my friends here find geodes in different places. And I had no idea what a great big hobby it was. Uh, it's uh, a lot of people we met out here, they're all having a great time um, collecting the geodes. Well, the sun's starting to come down, and this has been a great day out looking for geodes. The guys have been real successful here over at this particular spot. And if you're interested in finding geodes, that's what you got to do. Drive around the desert, find the different spots, talk to a few people, read a couple books about it, and you might just find a spot like this. For me as an overlander, I'm glad that I got invited out to see what this is all about because I'm used to just driving through, and not really stopping for too long in any one place usually. And it gave me a chance to hike around through the desert. It's a magnificent place, uh, pretty barren, but if you know something about it, there's all kinds of things you can find going on out here. Now that the guys have found a few buckets of promising looking geodes, it's time to gather up our stuff and head back for a short hike back to our vehicles. Stay tuned for the next portion of this video where I join Ed at his shop and he uses a special saw to saw some geodes in half to see what kind of beautiful gemstones are on the inside. From here, it's quite a few miles to the Wiley Wells campground and we'll be driving through the desert in the dark. Ed and Doug will continue on to Blythe and prepare for another day of rock hounding and I will start my long drive home to Northern California. If you saw my video from the Bradshaw Trail, you know that I was heading to Wiley Wells Campground to meet up with my friend Ed, and we were going to go out and collect nodules and geodes out at the Hauser Geode Beds that's a short distance from the Wiley Wells Campground. We had a great time, it was an awesome day, we stopped at a couple different places, and now you've seen some of that video from that. I actually didn't do any of the collecting myself. But Ed and Doug did, and this is some of the nodules and geodes that Ed found. And here are some that he's cut up that he found that day. So now Ed's going to show me the process of how you look through these, and then he's going to put a couple of these in his saw, and we're going to see what's actually on the inside of these. And that's just a roll of the dice. You never know until you open one of these up what you're going to get. Okay, so these are uh, ones we got from the previous, the, the trip we just went on. And, and these are a little bit the larger geodes. I sorted them from smaller to not so good geodes. Um, I cut a couple over here. And then I got some from the previous trips I went on. Uh, these are ones I kind of liked and are hanging on to. I got one uh, amethyst one. The only one that I've I've seen over like 200 of them or so that I cut open, I haven't seen any 
like um, uh, amethyst like this. This is the only one I got like this. So it'd be nice to get another one like this, but you never know. The difference between like a, a nodule and geode is the geode is usually a hollow. You got a hollow chamber in it. And the nodule is more solid. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hollow anywhere. A kind of neat nodule one with the uh, little bit of yellow orange kind of like in it. A kind of almost like star one, so with agate. Another different one, kind of neat. Come in a little bit different colors and stuff. One, even the small ones that aren't too big, you know, have something, you know, pretty nice sometimes. Or ones from the trip that uh, I cut earlier. Is that the trip that we just got back from? Yes, indeed it is. Okay, all right, so what we did was uh, I picked out one of the larger geodes that we found at the potato patch. And what I'm gonna do is uh, put it in the um, slab saw. This is a Highland Park slab saw, a 20 inch blade on it. Doesn't mean you can cut 20 inches, you can only cut like probably about nine inches on that. Um, this, that saw is extremely messy right now because I was cutting red agate before and red agate makes a mess. So what I'm gonna do is put it in the device the here, in a clamp, and try to get it halfway. You could do, you know, a better way of like maybe a tape measure or something like that, mark it halfway. Uh, but this one, I'm just gonna try to guess and get it, you know, try to get it good. Um, so let's put it in the ice right here. I'm gonna try to get it right on the corner, kind of hard to do where it grabs it. So I'm tightening it down and I want to make it pretty tight so this thing doesn't come out when it's cutting. So I try to get it as tight as I can and then I'm going to go up to the blade and check and try to see if it's about halfway. Might need to be adjusted just a hair, I think. I don't think it's quite halfway. A little bit tricky to do sometimes to try to get it halfway where it holds it and cuts it at the same time. Have you ever had one um, come out? Come out when you're. Um, there have been pieces that, you know, it, it, it has, um, you know, um, what usually happens, it, it takes it and. Uh, will start cutting a different way and not come out like a good cut. Um, the blade is very expensive on this and it saves you a lot of work when you're doing lapidary. If you had to, when you go to polish a geode or cut material, it doesn't leave a bunch of scratches and stuff. So the blade, you know, helps quite a bit. So now I get it up close to the blade and I think that looks about halfway. And we're going to go ahead and try that. So this has a warm drive on it and it pushes the whole vise and everything right into the blade as it cuts. And it got a little chain on it where if it goes too far, it will shut the machine down and uh, we'll turn it on and see what happens. And it, this, this here has all enclosed and stuff because the mineral oil which is in it will go all over the place if you didn't have a lid for it. All right, here we go. And now the waiting process begins. If you're enjoying watching this video where I've combined an overlanding and, and a rock hounding trip, consider hitting that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. With the saw running and cutting that geode, Ed and I had a chance to run out and grab a coffee. The Highland Park slab saw has been running behind me and we just heard a half of the geode fell so the saw's about done. Ed lets it run till it knocks off a little burr on the end and the saw will turn off automatically. 
Okay, so we put the nodule slash geo, whatever it is, I think it's more of a nodule, uh, probably solid, in the machine, and the machine is done cutting. So we're gonna take a look and see what we have, if we have anything, you know, pretty nice or not. It cut the uh, nodule in half, it was a nodule, and I could see one half of it fell in the little collector um, and cut it. I'm gonna move the vise back. I'm gonna take the other half out. It looks like I, I got a pretty decent cut on them. And grab it before it falls into the oil down below. And that, that's pretty much it right there. And it looks like a pretty nice one actually. Well, you know, we'll take and put this one aside and we'll put another one on and, and see what the next one looks like. But this has been a great adventure. When I usually go through the desert, I just drive through and I appreciate the scenery. I might get out and hike around a little bit. This is my first overlanding trip in the desert where I actually did something while I was there. I'm real thankful to my friend Ed and Doug for meeting up with me and allowing me to follow them around in the Hauser, Hauser geode beds. And I want to thank Ed for allowing me to come over and see how he does that. But thanks for watching and don't forget the best is yet to come. And I'll see you on the next one. One more time. Hit the thumbs up. No, hang on one more time. Sorry, man. This is the stuff you don't want people to see. <laughs>